Things are escalating very quickly against the United States of America, and this is something that we need to be paying attention to, and we need to understand that there could be a time here in the relative future where we see conflict here in the United States, not just somewhere else. We need to pay attention to some of the things that are changing on the global landscape and escalating right now so that you and I can be better prepared for them when they show up and come to fruition. These are things we have to really think about. We have to stop saying things like, it won't happen here, or this will never happen, or don't worry about this because it can't happen. Those are all things that people use as justifications for why they're not prepared. We should be ready for anything at this point in time. We're gonna go through a brief overview of a lot of different things happening around the world right now that shows you that this could definitely be a thing here within the United States at some point in time very soon. Now, I'll leave information in the description as well as in the pinned comment where you can check the sources of some of this info we're going to discuss and have a better concept and idea about what's really happening out there and why you should be prepared for things to get worse, okay? It's just happening fast, things are escalating, the United States is being targeted in many ways, and there's a lot of movements happening right now that you should be paying attention to. Nicaragua is allowing Russian troops to be in their country, including their planes and their ships, and they're having their them there to deploy for training, for law enforcement, and for emergency response, which is very interesting considering whatever emergencies they might have up their sleeve. Now, they're leaving a small contingency of troops there as well, so that should tell you something, that they are getting closer and closer to us. And Nicaragua is down in Central America. It's about 1,200 miles from Nicaragua to Puerto Rico, but still, that is very close and definitely in the realm of being on our doorstep. And now, there's something called the Monroe Doctrine that you should be aware of, which is basically a US policy principle, basically saying that any intervention in the politics of the Americas is going to be treated as a potentially hostile act toward the United States. And that's just how we've operated since the 1800s based on what Europe was trying to do in the sense of maybe additional colonization and things of that nature. So this doctrine is still there and it's something that we should be aware of in the sense of what our government might do in reaction to these movements happening in places like Nicaragua. Now, Russian jets are also doing airstrikes in Syria and they're uh, targeting places that American troops are currently stationed at. And this is something that is starting to cause a problem in that region because Americans and Russians are starting to get very close in the sense of maybe an accidental engagement, which we don't want to see happen because we know that will escalate things even further. But this keeps happening and eventually mistakes can be made and things can get much worse very quickly. All right. Russia and China are also cooperating in the Arctic. Okay. They're cooperating for sustainable development of the Arctic, which of course, that's what anyone in the world would definitely want to see happen. Sustainable development of the Arctic. If you don't think that has any military reference to it, you're being very naive. They are operating together in the Arctic, which means they are right on our doorstep. It is right there. Of course, Alaska is already very close to Russia as well as the Arctic, but in general, for both of those countries to be coordinating in that area should concern you for many, many reasons, okay? Now, Xi Jinping has also signed a order outlining China's military operations other than war, which leads to additional aggression in the South China Sea as well as what's happening over in Taiwan. And basically the concern there is that this is gonna push things further and further towards something hot in that region. And China's putting it all out there for everybody to see and read for themselves, um, but we're all just kind of waiting to see what will happen. Well, eventually something will happen, and they're putting it all out there now so that it won't be a surprise and that everybody will just say, well, I guess we saw that coming. I guess that's the, the, the strategy there. You tell me. Now, Chinese warplanes are also buzzing Canada's North Korean reconnaissance force, which the uh, Canadian Armed Forces uses to try to enforce United Nations sanctions on North Korea. And and they've had such close calls there that the Canadian uh, Air Force has had to literally change course or else they would have collided with these Chinese aircraft. Now, that escalation should tell you a couple of things because it's not just the United States, it's also Canada, who is obviously our northern neighbor. But these things are happening all over the North American region or to North American countries. And that should show you that level of escalation continues to rise. Now. Keep in mind that there's also some unverified reports, and this is 
out there for you to find. I will not link this information because like I said, it's unverified. But there are unverified reports that a lot of what China and Russia are doing by coordinating and working together is to eventually work towards the possibility of a war here with the United States. And I think that that's pretty reasonable to assume at this point in time. And if you haven't thought of that possibility, I don't think you've been thinking very hard about the current situation, but there's a lot of talk about China actually funding what's happening over in Eastern Europe right now via Russia. So these are things to keep in mind, and this is definitely a possibility that we should at least be aware of if not be planning for, all right? Now, why is this relevant? We'll keep this in mind. Okay, so Canada is already having their issues with China as well. We know Canada was gonna allow China to do some training back in, I think, 2020 or something along those lines. These are things that are out there for you to figure out on your own. But what I will say is that Canada is actually preparing for the downfall of the United States, okay? So Canada is already putting the United States into the category of a source of threat and instability in the coming years. They see what's happening to our country, they're aware of our economy, they're aware of the way our culture is transforming and the way our society is interacting with each other, and they're preparing for us to be the problem to the South that they're gonna to have to deal with in the sense of probably, I don't know, a refugee crisis, uh, illegal border crossings, who knows what else. But this is exactly what they're preparing for, which should tell you some things because there's other factors that would lead to the fall of the United States from outside forces that Canada might be more aware of or at least more concerned about than what we seem to be or at least seem to, I guess you would say, talk about, especially when it comes to our mainstream media. So this is all concerning and why you should be preparing for this to actually happen. Understand the whole Nicaraguan situation could easily turn into another Cuban missile crisis scenario at any point in time, especially depending on what type of equipment Russia is able to stage there. And, and the closer they can get to the mainland United States, the more of a threat there is of something happening. And this is always going to be the case, but this is where we are right now in our current day and age. Escalation is imminent, and the United States is currently working on putting together a permanent force in Poland in reaction to what's happening in Eastern Europe. And if you don't think that permanent force being placed in Poland will be an escalation of its own and allow for additional mistakes to be made where something could definitely ratchet up in the sense of conflict, well, I don't know what you're looking at or reading or doing lately, but I honestly believe that that is going to cause more problems than it's going to solve. And it also shows that our resolve as a country is to continue the situation that we are stretching further every single day, especially when it comes to supplying that opposition with money and supplies and ammunition and equipment. It just keeps going. And the more troops we send there, the more likely they're going to be used. So these are all things you really need to consider. I see a lot of naysaying when it comes to the comments. I see a lot of people saying that, you know, well, it hasn't happened yet, so what's the big deal? All these things are happening in the relative recent amount of time that we have to be aware of and understanding that could easily lead towards something much more major. And if you're not thinking that way, you're going to do yourself a disservice when it comes to something actually occurring. My hopes are that Nothing happens and everything de-escalates and the global economy gets back on track and we find ourselves living very comfortably once again and able to talk about things in the sense of fantastical or theoretical SHTF concepts where we used to just talk about, hey, these are the five things I could see happening that could really send us back to the Stone Age. Now we have to talk about things in the present as in the sense of current events that could be happening right this second that could actually send us back to the Stone Age. That's why we have to be very keen to what's going on at this point in time. All the information is down in the description as well as in the pinned comment. I'm just trying to steer you in the right direction as to not avoiding or not ignoring some of the things that are going on in the world. And if you have anything else for me at all, go to magicprepper.com. But besides that, that's gonna be it for Magic Prepper.